Hello. So, in this video, we are going to do polynomial long division. I know that sounds just awesome hearing, right? Two things you love the most. Well, the good news, or maybe not so good news, is that it actually works out really almost exactly the same as regular long division, with the asterisk that technically how one, like, learns long division is not really how one does long division. That's sort of easy to forget the technical process. So we're going to sort of look at the two and draw analogies to hopefully make it um, reasonable what's happening. Okay. So polynomial long division. What happens if we want to divide one polynomial by another, right? So we have something like this 10x cubed minus 11x squared minus 50x minus 21 divided by x minus 3. Now, you might wonder why we would ever do this. And the unfortunate sort of answer is that it turns out to be really useful, which means you're going to get to do this a bunch pretty soon. Um, and this is because there are ways of finding out whether or not there is a zero of a polynomial without factoring it first. And sometimes that's sort of the only way you do it. And then you have to extract that factor as a result. And you have to do that using some form of division. So with this sort of looming thought in the uh, you know, background, in some nice foreshadowing, we're going to go through the mechanics of doing the long division before we talk about sort of how to find these zeros without factoring first. But as mentioned, this is very similar, as it turns out, to actual just straight up number long division. So I'm going to go through an example of that, which might seem sort of crazy at this level of math. but. I'm going to do it carefully because A, may not actually work the way you remember it working, but B, I want to draw the sort of analogy when we do the actual polynomial. So let's say we are dividing 4,812 by 3. So we go through this sort of one digit at a time, right? So we look at 4 and we say, okay, how many times can 3 go into 4? We might sort of know or guess or whatever. We decide the answer is 1. Now, a lot of the times people will be like, okay, a multiple of three is three. They write down the three first and then they put the one up. But technically, right, and this is one of those things where it doesn't matter until we do it with polynomials. But technically, you're supposed to write the number first and then multiply those two numbers to get what you're after, right? The three times one gives you a three and that's how you write the three underneath. Again, doesn't really matter for numbers. Turns out this is actually sort of important with polynomials, which is why I'm sort of making that point now. So we have the 3 underneath, we take the difference, right? 4 minus 3, that gets us 1, and then we drop the next number, right? So then we're like, okay, now we have 18. How many times does 3 go into 18? Well, 6, right? So then we do 6 times 3, that gets us 18. We subtract, we get 0. Drop the next number, 1. We say, okay, how many times does 3 go into 1? It doesn't, but that means that we can't just skip it. We have to write in the placeholder, in particular, 0 right? Goes in zero times, zero times three is zero. Take the difference, still one. Again, I know usually you probably skip this in your head or if you're doing this out, uh, but with polynomials, this is actually going to matter, which is why I'm making this point. Last but not least, drop the two. I now have 12. 12 divided by three, that gives me four, which I subtract the four times three is 12, and I get zero. Zero is my remainder. Okay. So now that you're probably half asleep, because this is sort of math from probably more than a decade ago for some of you at this point. Uh, now we'll look at the polynomial version for this, okay? So again, we want to divide this 10x cubed minus 11x squared minus 50x minus, 12, uh, minus 21, all divided by x minus 3. So just like before, right, I have the number, or in this case the polynomial, inside the division, and I have the thing I'm dividing by outside, right? So I have the, the dividend and the divisor. Now, similar to what we did before, we want to be able to write something sort of up here and then have that sort of go into, right, multiply against this and sort of go into this as much as we can. The way we figure out what to do for that is that we look at just the first part of the divisor, the thing we're dividing by, and whatever we're dividing into, in this case, this 10x cubed. So we're going to take this thing, this 10x cubed, and divide by that first piece, this x, okay? When I do that, I get... 10x squared. And then I'm going to use this as the thing I put up top. So I'm going to write 10x squared up there. And then I'm going to take that 10x squared 
And just like before, when I was like, you usually skip this or do this the other way because it's easy with numbers. Now we want to take this and multiply against the entire polynomial and write down underneath. And this will be important because it'll give us this other piece here with this minus three and the sort of consequences of the rest of the polynomial we're dividing by because we've only looked at the x part of the thing we're dividing by. We didn't care about the minus three yet, okay? If we multiply that thing by 10x squared, well, the first piece, right, x times 10x squared is this 10x cubed, which is designed, right? We did that over here so that we would definitely be able to get rid of this first term. But then we have that 10x squared times negative three, which gives us negative 30x squared. And we're gonna subtract that line from the above line. Now, as a comment, you can do this just by subtracting if you're comfortable with that. Another thing that people often do, teach their own, whatever works for you, both perfectly valid, is to distribute the negative sign and then add down. So you could distribute the negative sign and add, which means that both signs in this case flip, so I have negative 10x cubed and positive 30x squared and then add straight down. So this first part, right, will cancel out because I have 10x squared, uh, 10x cubed plus negative 10x cubed, right? The whole point is that that difference is zero. And then the leftover piece, 19x squared, is the leftover piece. And just like with the, with the regular long division, when I'm doing polynomial long division, I'm going to drop the next part and do this whole process over again, right? So I look at the remaining sort of leading term, right, because the zero, I don't, I don't have to write zero x cubed. I'm just doing that so it's clear what's happening. But the new sort of leading piece is this 19x squared. So I'm going to divide by that x and see what the next piece is going to be, right? So 19x squared divided by x is 19x. Put that at the top, just right here. And then multiply against my divisor right underneath, right? Same thing that we did a second ago. And again, I can do add and sort of distribute that negative sign or just subtract straight down. If I subtract straight down, by design, that first piece cancels. Then this next piece, right, negative 50 minus minus 57. And right, I'm going to get a positive 7x. Drop the next term. Do it again, right? So looking at this 7x divided by x, that gets me 7. That's what goes up top. Then subtract that piece off. So now I have 7x minus 7x is 0. Negative 21 minus minus 21, also 0. And as before, this is my remainder, right? Because I dropped the last piece down. So what's left over is a remainder, which in this case is zero, okay? So this is how polynomial long division works. Now there's a couple sort of caveats here that I'm gonna talk about, but this is the same, this is the sort of framework that we'll always go through, right? We have our thing we're dividing into, the big polynomial inside, thing we're dividing by outside, and then we do that first term divided by first term to figure out what goes on top, then multiply that whole sort of piece that we just put up there against the whole thing we're dividing by to figure out what goes underneath so we can subtract, rinse and repeat until we're done, okay? All right, so before we did long division, right? We went through this whole thing, we had a remainder of zero, but that means that we could rewrite this thing, right, as a fraction equaling what we got, so here, Right? We could take the 4812, right? 4812 divided by 3 is 1604. But we could write it as this fraction, right? 4812 divided by bar 3 equals 1604. This is usually what we're doing when we're doing numbers. We could rewrite this, though, by thinking about this as an equality and moving the 3 over, meaning multiplying both sides by 3. We can say, okay, well, that's equivalent to saying 4812 is 3 times 1604. There's not usually a reason to do this with numbers, but there is a good reason to do this with polynomials. So if we look back at our polynomial, same idea here, we took the sort of big thing that we were wanting to divide into, we have the thing we divided by, and we have the result, right? So we can look at this as this big thing we're dividing into, and then divided by, and we got a result, right? Same thing as the like 4,812 divided by three was 1604, whatever, but sort of more useful, right? We were trying to factor. The more useful thing would be to move this x minus three over and say, we can factor our original thing, this 10x cubed minus 11x squared minus 50x minus 21 as x minus three times the thing we got at the top here, 10x squared plus 19x plus seven. 
Okay? So this is why this sort of long division is helpful is that it sort of is a tool to take a zero that we sort of magically know about. And again, we're going to sort of talk about that at another time, how these things are sort of magically known to us. But we can take a zero that we already know and extract it out and create a factored form with that piece of information. Okay? All right. A couple more sort of small asterisks here. But again, this is the lion's share of the idea. But in the equation, when we looked at it, in fact, let me go back here a second. When we looked at this thing, we have all of the terms because we just happened to have them all. They all had a coefficient, right? We had a 10 for the x cubed was the leading bit, but that we also had the square, the regular, and the coefficient, right? But if we're given one where we don't have them all, so for example here, I have a, a fourth degree term, right? x to the fourth an x squared and an x, but I don't have a cube and I don't have a constant. But it turns out that we kind of need those. So when we think about you know, numbers, for example, if I have 1,024 in long division, I'm not going to use 1, 2, and 4. I'm going to use 1, 0 as a placeholder for the hundreds that we don't have any of, 2 and 4, right, for the tens and, and ones place. I have to do the same thing here. So I have to inject these sort of terms, 0 x cubed and 0 as the constant, in order to sort of create all of the terms and make sure that they're all there. The other thing is how do we deal with remainders? So with numbers, if we had, for example, 4,813 instead of 12, and we did this whole process, we get 1,604 and we have a remainder of 1. Now you could do a decimal thing, but Decimals are sort of evil approximations and completely sort of arbitrary. Why we use base 10 instead of any other base. Uh, this is a pedestal I'm not going to step up on because this video will get really long. <laughs> but suffice it to say, fractions are almost always better for a variety of reasons. So the sort of better way to write this is that we could say, okay, 4,813 divided by 3 is really 1,604 and one-third. Okay. As a footnote here, uh, you probably learned about mixed numbers where we write 1604, 1 over 3. That's terrible notation because that looks like they're being multiplied and they're not. Don't ever write that <laughs> going forward from here. Always use the addition sign. So 1604 plus 1 over 3. Mixed numbers are for sort of certain archaic sort of applications of where numbers are used, like baking ratios and things. They're not for sort of standard number usage. So the thing I want to get away from the soapbox, sorry. <laughs> so the thing I want to point out here is that this one third is sort of generated not randomly, right? But it's this, it's the remainder one over the thing that we are dividing out, the three, right? So both of these numbers are represented in this process. And we do the exact same thing, once again, with polynomial long division. So if we had, say, a remainder of 15, meaning that we had sort of the same polynomial as before, but we're doing a minus 6 instead of a minus 21, we go through the whole process, we get basically the same polynomial, except we would be sort of shy a little bit because we'd end up with a 15 as the remainder instead of a 0. But we do the same thing when we try to factor. As it turns out, sort of having a remainder means it didn't factor cleanly because it didn't end up being a polynomial inside because I have this over x minus 3 bit in the sort of fraction form here, right? So this is no longer a polynomial. So we wouldn't normally want to have this, right? We would say that this is sort of failed from a factoring standpoint, but it's still just as valid of a sort of result. And again, to be clear, the 15 being the remainder, that's what goes on the top. So whatever remainder you get is going to be on the top. And then whatever you're dividing by ends up being on the bottom, this x minus 3 here, right? So how we dealt with remainders, assuming you're using fractions, right, with normal long division of numbers is the same way that we use sort of remainders and represent them with polynomial long division, okay? All right. So what do we do? Well, we talked about one of the two major ways of doing sort of division with polynomials. And this particular one, polynomial long division, it's sort of the almost exact parallel or almost exactly sort of analogous to the very formal process of doing long division with numbers, which in fairness, 
almost nobody actually does once you've learned it because there's sort of quicker mental tricks to do. But the process is hopefully sort of buried and, and clear enough that, uh, you know, the, the analog is helpful to be like, OK, how do I sort of go through long division with numbers? That's the exact same process that you use for polynomials where you divide out those first terms to find what the number you or expression that you're going to use above. Then you multiply that against the whole thing you're dividing by right underneath. Take the difference, drop the next term, rinse and repeat. If you get a remainder of zero, that's great. It means it factored perfectly. If you don't, you could still technically write it in a factored form. I put this in quotes because it's not actually a factored form in the sense of like polynomial factoring because it's not a polynomial anymore, right? But we can represent it as having whatever the remainder is divided by whatever you're dividing by, right? The divisor just like with numeric long division, okay? And again, the sort of part that is the most common mistake for students is remembering that you definitely need to have every term below whatever degree you have as like the leading term. You need every term represented, even if that means that you have to sort of inject zeros that are missing so that you sort of have to have the full expression all the way down. Some of them might have coefficient zero, but that'll make everything sort of line up as you go. Okay, so that is that.